All right, Jesse on fire, welcome back to the channel. Three in one day, look at this. Actually four, if you include the Jesse on everything video that I did, which you should include and you should go watch it because it's, you know, it's really enlightening if you uh, care about the kinds of things that I talk about over there. But anyway, let's talk about this because Leon Edwards has an opponent, it's Bilal Muhammad. And I watched him fight on my live broadcast at UFC 258. And anybody who watched that can tell you what I think of him. He is good, dude. That guy, if you don't know who he is, he is really good, man. Like really, 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 really good. Uh, he fought, uh, let me look this up real quick because I should have looked this up before I started the video, but I want to talk about the, you know, the fight that he had um, at UFC 258. It was against uh, Diego Lima, and that was a great fight, dude, because... He looked so good, but Lima just kept on chopping at his legs and he just ate him. I mean, like, he took some serious leg kicks. Now, I couldn't hear the announcers because I was doing a live broadcast, but I would imagine, as a matter of fact, I remember in the chats that you guys were telling me, like, uh, that, that Joe Rogan was saying the same thing as me, which is that uh, he can't take many more of those leg kicks. He ate a ton of absolutely vicious leg kicks. Like, not, not like soft, like, if Lima does one thing good, it is chop your legs out. And he did a great job. But man, Muhammad is so precise with his striking. His hands are, I was incredible. That's the first time I remember knowingly watch him fight. I was incredibly impressed with him. I mean, really, really impressed with him. And I said it over and over and over throughout the, uh, through that event. You know, like there were tons of fights uh, throughout that event that we were kind of like, all right, whatever. But that particular fight, if you watched, you'll remember, I said many times, I was like, wow, this guy is good. He is so good. He's so precise with his hands. It's, I mean, he is one of the most accurate punchers I've seen in a long time. He's going to be very, very hard to beat. But Leon Edwards is great too. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see because these guys, uh, they have similar skill sets, man. Like um, Leon Edwards is very accurate, very quick, but not like devastating knockout power very similar to Muhammad and I think it's an interesting choice that they uh that they chose or not interesting I think it's obvious it's an obvious choice like you know you have Hamza Shemaev is supposed to fight him he falls out you have the you know entire Muslim fan base very very disappointed so you give them you know a new up-and-coming Muslim fighter to to step in who's very very good so I it just shows the UFC knows what they're doing and um and I I you know of course nothing but the best wishes for Hamza he's he's in Las Vegas now with uh you know better doctors but man it's concerning that he's uh he's really like sick like that I had to go keep going back to the hospital it's so weird how that happens man it's just like every once in a while just one random person is it's just lingers and lingers and lingers and it obviously has nothing to do with whether they're healthy because he's obviously healthy you know it's just bizarre man very bizarre virus but but yeah muhammad uh he's getting a tremendous opportunity i mean so let me think about this so they're fighting wait a minute 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 March 13th? They're fighting March 13th? Wow. That is not very far away. That is not very far away at all. And if you're reading my mind about why that matters, it's because, I mean, Muhammad ate enough leg kicks that, like, he was not, he wasn't fully training on that this week. There's no way, absolutely no way, that he was training full throttle. He won't be training full throttle this week either, uh, this coming week. I mean, he ate serious, serious heavy leg kicks. I mean, like, so all he could be doing right now is, is light training, letting his leg heal. I mean, geez, May 3rd or March 13th. That is right around the corner. Man, that really favors Leon Edwards. I mean, that just, that really favors Leon Edwards. Because, you know, Muhammad didn't take, you know, very many head strikes at all. But man, his leg was damaged. That's, that is crazy. That's really close. I mean, I would take the opportunity if I was him too, as long as I thought I could fight. I mean, it's not something that you pass up. Like this is, he's getting a, a top five guy in, in place of Hamza Shemaev, where this was a very heavily hyped fight. This is a tremendous opportunity for him. So he's got to do it. You know, he's got to take it and he's got to fight. But um, geez, if I'm betting, I mean, you guys know me. If you, if I tell you what to do, bet on the other guy. So, but I, I mean, if, if, yeah, you know what I was thinking about? It, it, like now after like predicting a bunch of fights that went the other way, even if I kind of predicted what was going to happen right and then having people talk shit, I realize now if you really watch these analysts, a lot of them don't, they don't, they don't pick a fighter. Like they just kind of go, well, you got to think about this, you got to think, and then they don't commit really, you know, or if they do commit, they commit real soft. So no balls, you know, even though I'm a little gun shy now too, but, um, 
but yeah, I mean, if you're going to factor, if you're, if you are thinking of who to bet on, I mean, you have to factor that in. I mean, you have to, I mean, it's just like, I mean, that, that, so four weeks after that fight, I mean, that was, um, cause that fight happened on the 14th. So, I mean, you're talking one month and I mean, that guy took as much damage to his leg as you could take while still winning the fight and no one knowing. Unless that guy's legs are made out of, like, granite, he, he took damage to his leg. I mean, straight up, that he's going to need to, uh, that's going to need to heal. And so I just imagine he's probably not going to be able to train very much. But that's neither here nor there. I mean, he's obviously trained. You know, he just did a camp. He rests a little bit, makes sure he doesn't, you know, let his weight get out of control and he should be good to go. But uh, but that that little factor, if if there is a uh, a betting line, should certainly favor uh, Liam Edwards right there. But anyway, I'm very excited about that fight. I don't even know where he's ranked. This is all stuff I should have looked up before I started this video. But, you know, you guys like when I do this stuff. And I just kind of talk you guys through while I'm looking at things so let's see welterweight where is Bilal muhammad he is ranked um no way he's unranked oh my god that division is utterly stacked man oh no he's 13 i'm sorry he's 13 um man i like him in a lot of these fights dude welterweight is so stacked just because now i'm doing this and we're talking kamara usman colby covington Gilbert Burns, Leon Edwards, George Masvidal, Stephen Thompson, Michael Chiesa, Tyron Woodley, Damian Maya, Neil Magny, Vincent Luque, Joff Neal, uh, Jin Lang Lee, Bilal Muhammad, Hamza Chimaev, Robbie Lawler. That is a Mack truck of a division. That is crazy, dude. That is so stacked. And at the same time, you know, I mean... It's it's top heavy, obviously. I mean, Kamaru Usman's already beat Burns. He's already beat Leon Edwards. He's already beat Masvidal. He's already beat Colby. Actually, he's already beat all, he's already beat the other top four guys. Um, but he hasn't beat Stephen Thompson. That's a weird. That's a weird stylistic matchup. Um, Michael Chiesa. Oh, dude, that's a walkthrough for Kamaru because you know the whole like oh this guy's a good grappler thing. Pff, he'll just he'll just shake him off and he'll beat him up on their feet. Tyron Woodley's already beat Damian Maia's already beat. Neil Magny is not a threat to him. Vincent Luque is good, but no. I mean, yeah, Kamaru Usman owns this division, dude, straight up. Um, but now that we're doing that, let me look at, uh, let's see what these other divisions look like. Since if you guys want to hang around, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly here. But uh, let's look at middleweight. Actually, I already did that today. Let's not look at that one. Let's do light heavyweight and just see what the opposite of a stack division looks like. All right, so you got Jan Blahovic. Uh, Glover Teixeira, Tiago Santos, Dominic Reyes, Alexander Ratchik, uh, Jiri Prakoska, uh, Anthony Smith, Volkan Olsdemir, Nikita Krylov, uh, Johnny Walker, Misha Kirkganov, uh, ooh, Magomed uh, Ankalev is very good. That's crazy. He's 11th. Jimmy Crute, uh, Ryan Spann, Paul Craig, Jamal Hill, who's 7-0. You got a, a guy in the top 15 at light heavyweight who's 7-0. Dude, uh, that's what happens to a division if you have someone like John Jones in it for as long as he's been in it. I mean, that's just, honestly, you want to talk, what's crazy now, you, you know, we're probably watching this video, talk about Leon and, and Bilal Mahadon, and if you waited this long, I'm about to drop some, uh, uh, a piece of, uh, you know, knowledge on that ass. Because what I'm realizing is you want to talk about a GOAT conversation, a very, very good way to do that is if the guy's still active, go to his division and just look at what it looks like. If it looks utterly decimated with no depth, that means that you've got a guy, a potential goat on your hands. Like remember when GSP beat everyone twice? Like, so it just looked like, well, who's he going to fight now? Anderson Silva, same thing. Well, who's he going to fight? It just looked like there's nobody there because you have this champion that's so much better than everybody. And John Jones, I mean, did you just hear that? I mean, Glover Teixeira is the number one contender. I mean, Alexander Ratchik is, is four. I mean, there's, there's just nobody there. Uh, and then heavyweight, you could say the same thing. Uh, you got you got Stipe, and then you got Francis, and then you got Curtis Blades, who lost to Francis twice. I don't think he's ever fought Stipe, but he wouldn't beat Oh, wait, maybe he did. I don't know. You got uh, Rosenstreak is third, and uh, Francis knocked him out in 11 milliseconds. Derek Lewis... Um, yeah, Volkov, he's a beast now, man. That guy is a monster. I didn't realize how big he is, dude. I had no idea how big that guy was until I saw him next to Alistair Overeem. I was like, oh my gosh. He is gigantic. He is huge, dude. 
He's a problem, too. Like, that, that is a guy who's a problem. I, I'm actually really excited to see him fight. Um, a lot of guys. Like, Cyril Game, too. He's 7-0, but uh, he's huge. I would love to see him fight Volkov. I would love to see Volkov fight any of these guys. Literally any of them. Um, yeah, I mean, once you get past there, there's just, you know, it's light. But uh, let's check out Lightweight. I mean, obviously, everybody knows Lightweight, but Khabib, Dustin, Justin... Charles Oliveira, Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson, Conor McGregor, Dos Anjos, Hooker, uh, Darush, uh, Paul Felder, Diego Ferreira, Kevin Lee, Ali Quinta, Islam Akashev, Gregor Gillespie. That ain't welterweight. Welterweight is fucking stacked, man. Let's look at featherweight. Volkanovski, Holloway, Ortega, Zabit. That's a great top four, though. Then you got Yeah or Rabi. Again, there's a big, a big drop off after the top four, but man, that is a that is a strong top four. Bantamweight, this is super stacked. Peter Yan, uh, Aljamain Sterling, Corey Sandhagen, Rob Font, Cody Garbrandt, Jose Aldo, Marlon Moraes, Frankie Edgar, Pedro, Mu Pedro Munoz, uh, Jimmy Rivera, Rafael Asanso, Dominic Cruz, uh, Marab uh, Devashvili, 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 um, Cody Stammen, Song Yudong, and Chido Vera. And last but not least, flyweight, Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, Benavidez, and then a bunch of people that are just waiting in line to get beat up by Figueredo. Anyway, so this uh, this video kind of sprawled, but uh, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell and tell your friends. Peace.